Hi, everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, and I'm a draftsman and also the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I offer you episode 65, and I will have this conversation with artist Victoria Herrera. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also subscribing to my audiovisual channel. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to show your support with money, it is also very welcome and appreciated. Uh, you can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is just gabriellahandle.com, one word. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay by prints of drawings or leaving me a tip. Thank you for your time and attention in watching this episode, and do leave a comment so I know you watched. I hope you enjoy it. All right, Victoria Herrera, thank you so very much for agreeing to talk to me today. You are episode 65 of A Conversation About Art. Please tell our listeners and viewers, our future listeners and viewers, who you are and what you do. Thank you so much. Before anything else, for having me. It's really an honor and a pleasure to talk to you and your audience and getting to know you too a little better. I am an artist. I'm, I guess I'm considered a representational artist. Um, I am classically trained. I, I study the college. We can talk a little bit more about how I started in art, but I ended up studying at Grand Central Academy in New York. Um, learning, you know, like the French academics would teach in the 19th century in France. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So before we started the recording, you mentioned that you first started out with photography and then I don't remember what school you went to before Grand Central Academy. Yes. Um, so when I, uh, so I guess I started back, way back when, when I was a freshman in college, kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I went to College of Notre Dame in Towson, Maryland. And at that time, I took a class in photography, and I fell in love with it. Um, I actually wanted to become a photographer before I wanted to become a painter or an artist. I uh, I took a class and I, I remember spending hours and hours in that dark room and to see, you know, this image come to life from something. Oh, because it was on film. It was in film. Yes. And okay. then it was so amazing to, for me, to look through that little square, through that lens and just be able to capture that instant um that I could later on see you know after working with all those chemicals in a dark mm. room come to life so to okay. me that was fantastic I actually wanted to be a photojournalist and uh my parents said no you're mm. not going I wanted to go to the war I wanted to capture like the scene at the you know that specific time or work for National Geographic and and they're like, no, 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 you know, Bayern, you're going to be a mother, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids, you're not going to be running around, you know, <laughs> uh, after soldiers anywhere. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I, I work with uh, fashion photography. I actually, after that first year in, in Baltimore, I, I transferred to, a, to an art school, art college in Philadelphia, Moore College of Art. And there I continued to focus on photography, fashion photography and painting. And uh, and again, my parents like, what are you gonna do with fashion photography in Panama? Mm -hmm. uh, so they managed to get that idea out of my head and I just focus on painting. Um, the problem with the painting at the time was I didn't really click with the art movement. This is back in the 80s where uh, Art Nouveau, but new expressionism and conceptual art was the thing. And mm. I just I just could not click with it. 
And I went back home. I went back to Panama and I was there. I actually worked for uh, one of the top advertising agencies there. I, I continued to work with photography. And about two and a half years later, uh, I decided to move back to the United States. I had the visa and I have the, um, the resources to, to move and kind of like, you know, expand my, my wings here. I remember my first job was in Washington, D.C., where I lived uh, for many years uh, with a food photographer. Uh, yeah, food photographer. Oh, okay. You know, like okay. it, it was so it was so cool. He um, to see what they do to food to make it look pretty for magazines. Like they put glycerin on the turkey, so it looks all like you know glossy and perfect. And there's all kinds of chemicals that they put into food to make it look pretty for magazines. So mm -hmm. that was okay. that was wonderful. Um, but in terms of painting, I continue to paint. You know, express myself. You know, I would like to say it was a hobby. I did it often, but it wasn't, it was really not a career. Mm -hmm. I, I, after that, I worked for printing companies and I was always close enough to, to the creative spirit of other people, but I wasn't working professionally. Um, and then about, um, uh, about 17, 18 years ago, 17 years ago, I uh, I've met someone who convinced me to move with him to New York, and he said, I mean, he actually supported my my love and desire to eventually really become an artist. I was just afraid of. I had a very very good job this this time I'm living in Virginia, and um, he said, "What is an artist doing in Virginia? You have to come to New York." So I I moved to New York. And then I started looking for, okay, who's going to teach me to paint like, you know, like some, I guess I was dreaming with, with art that would move me, that mm -hmm. it was, I mean, the Impressionists were very popular, but I've never seen Rembrandt or anything, any of those old masters. And uh, I, I, I was getting kind of like stressed out there. Back then, they were not very many ateliers or schools mm -hmm. to study uh, this kind of art form. And I was at the Metropolitan Museum and I just could not, I, I remember I wanted to cry being mm -hmm. when I finally discovered Velasquez and Rembrandt and, you know. Sergeant. This, oh my God, yes. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, like, <laughs> Who's gonna teach me? Who's gonna teach me to paint like this? This is nothing like what I have experienced in college or actually heard about in Panama. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was getting very kind of depressed because I already had gone to the Art Students League. Um, I remember Nelson Shanks, um, mm -hmm. one of the teachers mm -hmm. there. And, and of course I signed up with him right away, but he come from Delaware, like, you know, one or two hours once a week she'll he'll tell you a few things and that was it and I wanted more I needed more I I was um dying to find someone who would truly like take me under his or or her wing and and teach me so I'm walking out of the med kind of depressed because at this point I've done a lot of research about who could who could who could teach me? And my mom calls me on the cell phone and it's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, you have the med. And you know, I saw this. And I saw I explained my story about what I had experienced and how sad I was that I couldn't find anybody. And my mom who solves everything with religion and prayer, he says, well, you are not asking the right things to God. You need to lift your arms up in the air and mm -hmm. say, God, please, you know, show me the way, show me the person, give this to me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and then the guard came. It's like, you can't talk on the cell phone here. So we hung up, but I listened to my mom and I'm like, okay, uh, all right, here it goes. God, please. You know, I need a teacher who teach me how to do that. And it's like, give it to me. To it. Yeah. So as I'm walking out of the revolving door at the Met, I noticed this handsome, tall guy man walking in carrying a french easel and a palette i'm like hmm 
that's interesting. So I went right back into the museum <laughs> and yeah. I followed him for about 40 minutes. He went there, he signed something up and I'm like, I was so curious, like, what is this guy going to do with this painting box and a, and a palette, giant palette? Anyway, long story short, he ends up parking himself right in front of the Rembrandt and takes out oh. this copy that he'd been working on that was just as magnificent as the real one. And I remember I was shaking. I wanted, I just could not believe my eyes. And eventually I, uh, I approached him and I said, excuse me, uh, do you teach? And he looked at me and he said, well, I could. How serious are you? I said, I am so serious. Please, please, please. I need to learn whatever it is that's going to take. I'll, I'm willing to do it. His name is Mark Tennant. And, ah, uh, okay. Are you familiar with him? He, I have heard the name, yes. Yes. He He's like, oh, I just adore him. So, so he said, okay, come Friday to my studio in Chelsea. Back then, he was just mainly work he was so into Rembrandt and doing you know master uh, copies from masters mm -hmm. so I started working with him every Friday for about a year in his studio one-on-one -on -one, and he was exactly what I manifested I mean he would like he would just sit in front of the painting and he said you know this is how you measure a lot of measuring you measure this and measure and the proportions and then you apply this way and you do this thing and this is how you clean your brushes and then when I was when I would sit down and I would just like follow he would just pick a book out of the thousands of art books that he had like about Sargent you mentioned Sargent and he would read me a passage and you know that would explain some sort of metaphor what I was doing mm -hmm. and it was just exactly I mean God gave me exactly what I asked for mm -hmm. and after a year of that he said well you know I think now it's time for you to go and study more academically Grand Central I think had been in existence um I don't know a couple of years maybe three years so he gave me a nice letter of recommendation and then I went and beg, I had to beg Jacob Collins to let me in because I was too <laughs> old for the, for the what? For, yes. So he he preferred students that are very young, sometimes even out of high school. I mean, his philosophy is, and I understand it, like his philosophy is if you come in with all kinds of different um, aesthetics or art education, uh, you know, it can it can get confusing, uh, or you might not follow through. And you know, they have a very specific way of teaching. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and um, anyway, I beg and I beg and I beg. And I remember I said because I practiced my interview with him, and I said, "Okay, Mr. Collins, let's just get the cat out of the bag." I am, <laughs> you know, I'm forty years old, forty four, I think it was like you know and he he just looked as he just went back and he said okay like uh, me too <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I insisted until he he admitted me and, and it's funny because out of our that group at that time there were 15 of us that started in one five 15 15 yeah in that okay. that year and only four of us actually finished the core program uh -huh. It's intense. It's like I don't know how many times I went to the bathroom and cried. <laughs> because oh no! It's like it was. It's, a, it's an academy, but you know, you you go in there. I, I live. I live in Montclair, New Jersey. So I'll be on that bus going to New York at six thirty in the morning, back at home at seven thirty at night. You know, uh -huh. every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Full time student. Full time and. And then, you know, we had like half an hour to have lunch. So in that half an hour, you also had to prepare for the new model or the new class because four hours, yeah, yeah. four hours. So anyway, so I, um, but I remember then when I finished the court program, I, I reunited with Mark, Mark Tennant, who said, okay, so now you are done being a student. Now go be an artist. I'm mm -hmm. like, but I'm an artist. Like, no, you're a student. Now you gotta find your own voice, and you got to, you of course you wanna apply what you learn, but you gotta find, you know, you gotta find your way, and uh, so that was my education. Okay. Okay.
that's that's quite a an adventure yes sounds like it was yeah. quite an adventure um okay so i have i'm curious okay so the when you first encountered painting i from what i understand from what you were saying you weren't interested because the subject matter of the time that was you know like in fashion you weren't interested in because you said it was like around the 80s so around the 80s there wasn't I mean as from what I hear there wasn't a lot of figuration and representational work and it was like oh yeah abstract and this type of stuff and but you wanted so so it seems like the intro it didn't spark your interest because it wasn't the figure it wasn't nature you know like this type of stuff but then but then when you were able when you discovered that it was possible to do that with paint it's like then you were like all right that's what I want to learn it's like that's what that's what I want to paint exactly yeah exactly. Okay. Uh, when I was 15 years old in Panama I did take classes with there was a small school Ganexa in Panama where yeah. I was still there <laughs> yes it's at <laughs> university now yeah uh, but back in the day it was just like you know the one teacher director of teaching and he did teach actually realism I, I, I a little bit of it so I had a I had a I had a feel for what it meant to to paint like a, a still life. I think that, mm -hmm. that's what I was learning back back then. Um, but the idea of being able to paint a human being that look actually mm -hmm. like a human being uh, yeah. was like, how do I do that? Where do I go? I mean, right. And then again, it was just like out of manifestation or like pure luck that you know I run into Mark Tennant before then throughout the, my whole you know years before I was very much still focused on photography I just still love it I remember when digital photography came like the, the cameras I was so mad it's like how could this be happening they're ruining it. <laughs> I was like yes thank you but um <laughs> But uh, for and photo I like to mention one thing about photography is for me, you know, I remember being at Grand Central and even saying the word, it was like saying photography. Really, yeah, of, or <laughs> photography was saying like yeah. a really bad word. Because uh, yes, we learned to paint from life, you know. So yeah, photography yeah. is kind of like I don't know a cheating tool, a crunch, whatever. But. For me, I it's I, I love it so much. I mean, I could spend twenty minutes looking at at a, at, an, at a subject, whether it's a flower or an insect or the clouds. I mean, and 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 just look and look and look until I wait for that right one second that you know I capture the essence of what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So I take you know a lot of photograph uh, photographs like. And that's part of my creation. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Um, okay, so I want to ask you about the rigorous study that you had to undergo while at Grand Central, because um, I guess I wonder, um, because, okay, so when I was looking for a place in which to study, I did want some degree of what is considered traditional um, artistic study, which is really drawing, uh, I mean, what I wanted was to draw from the figure. I wanted to be taught anatomy. Because again, it's like in, in Panama, I also went to Ganexa. And, um, you know, out of out of like three years, I think it was, I got maybe three months of figure drawing you know and it was difficult and be, you know it's funny about the religious part because it's like it was so difficult to get a, a, a female model to get naked for us like I remember that you know for that purpose you know we had we had one girl that was nude and then this one other girl she was wearing like a bathing suit for example in another occasion it's like I, I remember all the three models that I got when, in, in that short time anyway but it's like, yeah, it's the that experience of not, not having, I mean, having some contact with art, but that art being limited to certain subject matter and then not seeing just anything else. Because I mean, Panama, Panama has a lovely museum, the, the Mac. I mean, I love that place. That is a 
incredible building, but it's like the stuff they show there very often is more, you know, contemporary type, oh, installation and performance, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's like, so it's like, I, you know, I saw the classical, like the masters type stuff, but in books only. And then, um, you know, so I did want some kind of traditional type teaching um, in, in the form of drawing the figure and studying anatomy. Um, and I got that. I got exactly what I needed at the New York Academy of Art. It's like, it was really demanding, lots of drawing, lots of anatomy, because it's like, I don't know how to study anatomy by myself. You know, so it's like, you know, if you want to undertake painting, it's like, where do you start? It's like, if you want to paint representationally, where do you start? So, so, so yeah, I got exactly what I needed at the Academy because it also had like exactly the dosage of exactly the, the dose of like modernity in quotes that I needed also, because I personally, I'm not sure if I would have, if I would like that, uh, French Academy style teaching because also what you said about going to the bathroom to cry because because it's like listen I tried in the Academy as well like uh for cast drawing and cast drawing being difficult already by default the teacher was like hey do you guys want to try sight size um so I was like yeah I mean you know I was like a sponge I wanted to try everything you want to teach me something teach me I will learn it and so like <laughs> I fucking hated sight size so much. I was like on the verge of tears because I was so angry and frustrated at the end of like three hours. You know, I only didn't like let it go because the teacher walked in and I was like, I'm not crying in front of the teacher, you know, but it's like, I mean, I'm just saying that like that rigorousness, as much as I respect it in the sense that like, I'm aware that it is necessary, you know, I don't know. Um, All right, I'm rambling a little bit. What I want to ask you is, do you feel that being reined in so tight when you were being taught it's like did you do you think that when you were you know released I guess when you were freed from that and you were trying to find your own voice and your own way as an artist do you do you think that that was I mean have you been able to let go of it uh are you you know I mean how do you how did you feel after I guess you know I guess Honestly, I would not change a thing. Mm. Even with all my, I remember the third year, I was so close to quit. Um, I forgot what happened. Um, At Grand Central? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, I, I forgot. Something happened where, I don't know if there was a critique or something that went sour. And uh, all my insecurities and, you know, came out and my anger and I remember that specific day going to the bathroom to like cry out of frustration. Um, but but I didn't. And I am so happy that I didn't. I mean, mm-hmm. what I learned, I value so much. And I guess if we compare uh, that kind of training to, you know, athletes, I mean, what they go through, my God, mm-hmm. not only <laughs> they cry like, you know, out of frustration, but they they torn their bodies apart. To, to do what they have yeah. to do with this gymnast. So I guess I thought about that and, um, excuse me, I felt so so blessed that I had that opportunity that I finally right. found the place that was teaching me what I've always wanted to learn. I wasn't just about to just like, you know, like trash it. Um, but I, I think that what Mark Tennant told me later on is like, okay, now you're done being a student now go become an artist mm-hmm. was was also very meaningful to me because it's like I realized then that no I mean I, I've learned this form of um of training uh, but it's not what I wanted to to do you know afterwards like I didn't I, I it was not my desire to continue to paint the new figure in you know the reclining pose you mm-hmm. know for the rest of my life so um you know I started evolving I started practicing I started like looking into looking within to really what what is it that I, I wanted to express and and you know I came up with painting flowers because um my my sister I've been visiting Panama and then I came back to the United States one year um and I was really homesick I was really 
you know, I had, I think I had a moment of introspection where I was just like really thinking about what, you know, I took for granted growing up. I spent mm. a lot of time in the rainforest in Panama, for, for, in Boquete, four hours away from five from the city. And, and I realized that that made me so incredibly happy to be like in depth into like the, the, uh, the forest and surrounded by nature. And mm. then I came home and I was very homesick and very, I don't know, melancholic at that time. And then my sister happened to call me and say, listen, I am going to be part of this show. She was doing interior designing at the time. And, you know, a group of designers have taken on this old hospital and we're all going to, you know, redesign certain spaces and redecorate. And I need you to make me a painting that is 72 by 72 inches uh, big. So, um, it, it was almost like a perfect moment. And, and I thought about it, it's like, what about those hibiscus flowers? Like a hibiscus flowers that are all over Panama that I never pay attention to. Uh, at, at the In the rainforest area, there's there's so much more beautiful. They're not just the five petal one, but they have multiple amounts of petals. And they're they're like big the, too. They're do- yes. So I have really? discovered those. Yes, they're like a rose and the petals move and there's so much rhythm. And and then and then I re- and then being melancholic as I was, I said, you know, I I never really pay attention to those flowers growing up. And so I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna paint her one. And uh, and this is way before Grand Central, actually. Ah. Yeah, this is okay. This is before and um and then I um, I said I'm gonna do it in gray colors, like I'm gonna in in in, in, in you know gray tones, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it that way so people see the paintings. But I thought it's like painting this giant big red you know viscous flower it was not gonna create you know uh, and it wasn't gonna connect with the viewer the way I mm-hmm. wanted. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my experience of not seeing this flower on a canvas so i'm going to paint it gray so people notice it and paint it any way they want in their minds so i i did that and it was such a successful painting everybody stopped asking my sister who painted that and i'm back then again it's not about like you know the veins and you know all this stuff that i've been working on and 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 uh the way I paint now is very translucent. No, back then it was just like brush strokes and it was just more of this emotion, you know, that I wanted to create. And, uh, but what did it was that it was painted in grays. So people did notice it more than a typical red. Interesting. Big yellow flower, yes. And that's how, where I started to paint flower. People say, oh, you paint flowers. I've only painted the hibiscus flowers. Um, and most of them are from Panama, from that area. So you still paint the hibiscus flowers? Yes, I do. It's one like I, I do paint them. Uh, I paint them big. I think that my intention was always, based on my own personal experience, to to paint a, a flower um, in large format that would almost force the observer or the viewer to stop and look at it it's like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it's something i think observation is something that we are completely um forgetting how to do like we're so connected with technology we're just looking at our phones we're so invaded by by news and information that i think the human being is actually forgetting how to observe or not Mm -hmm enough importance to yeah. how we observe you know I, you can you go through like a gorgeous park or like central park for instance and we're more interested in the selfie or like taking photos but to actually stop and look and see how sometimes like i was looking at ants walking i had, I had some ants in my yard and like i don't okay. know where they came out from but you know so i stay there and i was just looking how they like the way they way it yeah. was so pretty the way they walk and they have like this the rhythm. little path they follow 
Yes. And that was like, wow, that was amazing. I said, like, what are ants doing? It's so cold still, but they, I don't know where they were going, but I forced myself. And sometimes you have to force yourself. Yeah. Because the first inclination is to take a photo and then walk away. Like, you know, yeah, that's yeah. what they do. So, um, so anyway, so that, that's been my objective with my flowers always to kind of like, um, almost force the viewer to pause okay. for even one minute. And, and so my, and my favorite hibiscus flowers that I paint are typically gray or very neutral in color. Okay. That's really cool. <laughs> um, I, I, I like the intent of forcing the viewer to stop to look at the flower because you made it so big that they can't, that the viewer can't ignore it. Um, because yeah, I completely agree about, you know, the, it, the, the technology is obviously great and everything, but at the same time, you know, it's not without, without a price in a way, you know, because, um, I see the very thing that you just said about taking a photograph and walking away, just like when I go to the Met, for example. Yes. Where, where it's like, all right, I mean, it's like, I mean, all right, I mean, I don't, I don't like seeing people do that. I find it really heartbreaking. Um, but also, um, what was the other thing? Ah, I, you know, recently, and I think it's weird that I only just noticed, I don't know if people have been doing this for longer than I have been noticing, but I feel like recently, maybe in the last year, year and a half, I've been, what, when I go out for a walk, um, I have my phone in my back pocket, you know? But I see so many people walking and looking at their phone. Yes. You know? And that is like a permanent taking a picture and walking away, <laughs> I feel. It's like, that's just what you're doing because it's like, there's, it, and you know, sometimes they're doing that like while they're walking their dog. Sometimes yes. they're doing that while they're uh, walking with their baby. Sometimes just when they're walking by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand what could possibly be so important that you, the person can't stop looking at the phone to just, just walk, it, which, just be it, on a walk. Yeah. They just don't want to observe anything anymore except a screen. It's like I, or the area where I live in Montclair is really beautiful to go for walks, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, and I'm blessed for that, but I, even I have to like make make a, a conscious decision to go for a walk and actually the other day it's like okay I keep saying to myself do why am I walking looking now like I know I'm afraid to trip I trip easily but it's like I'm gonna walk look I'm gonna walk I'm gonna try to look up a little like and then like wow and it's looks like, amazing what's up there like the trees mm -hmm. the clouds how they change it's like it was like so now I try to not to trip but walk and look up a little more often and and stop you know I think stop yeah. me you know it's it's my nature like I I really really been practicing observation for so many years you know and part of that has to do with my my whole spiritual um experiences that I that I've had that you know for me now it's just part of myself to, to observe everything and and be quiet about it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay all right so um that's good that you brought up the spiritual part because i think it will relate to the two things that we will talk about uh after this because uh, we're running out of time um so okay so mrs herrera what is art in your opinion well i guess art can be anything uh, uh it's a way of uh, the humans have used for, I don't know, 70,000 years uh, to express themselves, to express their emotions. Mm -hmm. um, art is composed of, I don't know, different elements, line, shape, form, space, color. And I guess it's up to each person or each artist to take those elements, put it together in some sort of way, um, and either create something or give something to other people with the intention to create, to express an emotion or express mm -hmm. thoughts, whether, you know, these thoughts can be um, religious or political or thoughts about beauty. 
I mean, it, it, it really is such a broad, broad, broad question. Um, mm -hmm. In philosophy, for instance, like Plato um, didn't think that art had anything to do with, with um, a, you know, that art, that, that, that art had more to do with, with love, for instance, than with, that with beauty and nature. And um, you know, different philosophers have different had different opinions of what beauty is, and art was also. So I I guess is I have a friend, for instance, who sets up her table for every holiday, like Halloween and Valentine's, and the way she does it to me is like some sort of art form. And it's mm -hmm. I think that's what's um, now talking about what's beautiful art versus bad art for me. I mean, that would, that we could be here for hours, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's, there's a lot of it, of bad art, I think out there. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful art, you know, and it means something different for, for each person. But um, for me, I guess the, you know, to be more, a little more specific, the art form that I am captivated is the one that talks about beauty that that is able to awaken my my own inner human spirit my that creates some some sort of um I don't know I guess it, it's sort of like it's mixed with with beauty which I know you you want to talk about too because mm -hmm. you know it's it's hard to separate the one and the other for me anyway okay um, it just creates a certain emotion that it's good, that's novel. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So. Okay. So then. Um. I'm all right. I'm gonna do what I don't. Uh, something that I don't usually do, and in that case, I because I mean because of what you just said that they're linked for you, uh, art and beauty. So then, why don't you tell me what is beauty for you? What is beauty in your opinion? Well. Um. And then we'll talk about both. Yes. So I think beauty for me is it's anything that's beautiful that has beauty in it. I think it's it's something or someone who is capable to awaken in you the most noble of feelings to to um to make you feel positive things possible emotions such as peace or love or joy or hope um somewhere i read that the most beautiful things happen with our eyes closed like we pray with our eyes closed we kiss with our eyes closed sometimes we cry with the eyes closed so beauty is not something that you see per se like something is beautiful i think that beauty um it's felt more than seen and i think that beauty is innate i i really think that when we're born that comes with us it's like part of our soul because i think that and every, 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 it's all universal. I think every person, in, as the worst human being, the, the serial killer of the serial killers, has the potential to feel the emotion of something good caused by something beautiful, whatever that might be for that person. So, um, you know, there's such beauty in silence when you are able to quiet your mind and and you are profoundly in touch with your your spirit yourself when there's not the monkey brain telling you what to do next or what to think but there's such beauty in in moments like that that um you know we have to learn to to recognize because we live in such you know fast pace you know um kind of rhythm of life that it's it's I I always say somebody asked me the other day it's like what is your biggest um advice for a student 
And I always say, because I do it with me, it's like you have to work harder on yourself than on your art craft, or your artwork. Good um, and yes, so I think that realizing what beauty means to you and create with that intention of sharing that with the viewer is very important mm -hmm. because I think that uh, a lot of artists, yes, we have to create to, to make a living, to sell, to, you know, create a, a career, uh, shows, etc. But I think the intention behind whatever artwork has to be, has to kind of like come out of that uh, from a beautiful place with mm -hmm. the intention to, to give the viewer something that would make that person feel fulfilled, complete, hopeful, I don't know, um, something positive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, okay, so then, so then beauty is, I mean, uh, according to what I understand from what you're saying, there's something about beauty being an ideal that can inspire the viewer or the person who is feeling it um, to either feel very good about themselves, uh, to feel just positive and contemplative and quiet um, about themselves. And so, I mean, th does that sound right? I'm not clear about what you're trying to say. Are you I I'm, saying try I'm trying to, to see if, uh, I'm trying to kind of, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to kind of like repeat what you said, but like with my own words to see if I understand what you said. But is it that, do you feel that, like, I don't think that I need to necessarily be super happy and joyful and, you know, positive and hopeful um, to create something beautiful. I think there's there's beauty and sadness too, by the way. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. as long as it's genuine, as long as it comes from a very special place within the artist, I think. Um, I mean, there's so many beautiful paintings uh, that aren't necessarily kind of sad, you know, yeah. in terms of, of, in terms of uh, the subject matter. But even yes. with that sadness painted uh, or music, for instance, you know, there's there's such beauty in some some um, some songs or some compositions, and you know, that make us cry. But that's beautiful. They are beautiful. I mean, they just moves us. So, I think that I'm not talking necessarily about creating like creating like cheerful or being super cheerful. I think that it just has to be genuine. It has to be profound. I think. I think the intention has to be really gen with the intention. Let's just put put in perspective, not to get a thousand followers, but to mm -hmm. to really truly, you know share an emotion that is meaningful to you okay um but okay but why do you think that beauty has this effect on the viewer or the person that is experiencing it because because i mean so like why do you think it takes sometimes the shape of being moved to tears for example or why do you think it takes the shape other times of inspiring the viewer to either want to try like for example you know you see a rembrandt and you're like wow i want to paint like that because it's amazing for example like why does it sometimes take that shape and why does it other times take the shape of uh making the viewer want to be better you know for example like like why why, why does it why does beauty do that I don't. I don't Why think, do you think beauty do, does that. I don't. I don't think it's necessary to. I think it's more about not so much about the result, but it's so much about the intention of the artist, right? So, I don't think. I mean, 
if if the viewer in my case personally spends 30 seconds one minute not taking a photo of the painting but like feeling something maybe just enjoying the color or the composition mm -hmm. or the harmony of the negative space mm -hmm. um that i feel that i have fulfilled something you know that i have to, not fulfilled sorry that i have accomplished uh something i mean it is my intention to make the viewers feel some i don't i don't know some sort of like satisfaction like with portrait commissions i've been doing a lot of portrait commissions and that's probably why i've been i haven't been painting a lot of botanical botanical portraits as i call them or flowers mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it's such a huge responsibility when a client gives you a photograph or you do a photo shoot with the client and they want to be immortalized in a certain way. And, you know, you have to work from most of the time from, from a flat surface, which is mm -hmm. a photograph, you know, and then, yeah, you might, yeah, sometimes I have a chance to to work from life and do studies and, and, and get to know the person I'm going to paint. But a lot of times that person is no longer with us. So when I take a portrait commission, my sole intention is that when I give that painting back to the client, they feel a connection with that person. So it's like, it's like try to find the essence basically, um, behind of that painting would be let's say uh when people say oh my god like I, i'm giving clients commissions where they actually cry because they like they can feel their parent in the painting mm. or their yeah. you know, pen so so that's what i'm talking about in terms of creating some sort of you know reaction that is positive that it's that it's that makes you feel good, even if it's for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there's just in the world, you know, there's so much ugliness out there. There's so much stuff going on. There's all these fears, constant. I mean, it's just like, we're like fear coming this way, fear coming the other way, you know, the war, the this, and that, the politics. And, and to be able to create something that may, may distract the viewer for like a minute from that world. Mm -hmm. that's what I want to do mm -hmm. and I mean I may be successful sometimes maybe I'm, some other times I'm not as successful but at least that's what I want that's why I paint um okay so for you um in your in your artistic practice beauty and and art are just they're always they go together is that right for me for my personal taste yes Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's what I'm typically captivated by. I mean, it's, a, and it's, I, there's a, you know, I'm, a, I'm evolving actually. And I'm, I'm investigating the ocean. I have this great mm -hmm. desire to paint the ocean giant, like, like if you were submerged or like somebody drop you off in the middle of the Atlantic ocean, I am terrified of it. Uh -huh. it's, kid I must have like drowned in a previous life or something because it's just I've always been so afraid of even walking into the ocean mm -hmm. so um but I am dying to paint it there, there's a there's an artist that it's like my hero of the heroes in terms of one of my favorites he paints the ocean he's extremely what was the uh, artist again sorry his name is Rand Utner oh yeah mm -hmm. And I remember going to see his solo show, talk about like, you know, captivating the viewer and me being in front of this ginormous painting that if you get really close, it's amazing how abstracted it is. You go look back, you feel that the ocean is gonna come, the waves are gonna come and they're gonna grab you and you're gonna like, you know, they're gonna, <laughs> you're definitely, you're going to have to swim. And just having that, that really created an emotion of almost fear in me mm -hmm. but that was so beautiful at the same time that this artist was able to create that emotion in my in myself so yeah. now I am I'm so curious I was in Hawaii last month doing some studies uh -huh. and uh, I'm taking a zillion photos and just trying to study how the uh 
the waves move and all that. So I, I think I'm, I've started to do a few studies on that. So that will be That's interesting. very interesting. I, yeah, I, I want to see what, what it feels for me to paint something that I wanted to, yes, be, I guess, in some way, I, I don't know, beautiful and terrifying at the same time, at a minimal scale and brand. I mean, he's the best, but, you know, I, he, he provides a lot of inspiration for me. Um, you know, there's also, um, and it has come up in previous episodes, the relationship between beauty and nature and um, and uh, the feeling that we get from nature sometimes that it is so big and dangerous and terrifying and amazing. Uh, all of them together, you know, sometimes... You know, sometimes it'll be that, you know, you look at the ocean and it's like, wow, that is a big body of water. And it's like, you know, it. We, I mean, we're, we're land animals and it's like, we're in a big body of air, you know, but then being in a big body of water, because like, for example, like I'm, I'm not exactly scared of the ocean, but um, those like really deep images of like the sand going deeper and deeper, yeah. you know, like that's like, oh my God, that it's like the, the diving people, it's no thanks. Yes. <laughs> Forget it. It's like, you know, that, that is, that is really intimidating. But at the same time, it's like, it's like, I recognize the, the, I don't know, like the power and the amazingness of, I don't know, there's, there's life in there and the ocean gives us life. It maintains our life as well. It's like this relationship that has a, a lot of intense feelings yes. within within it you know so yeah like that I mean it, it makes sense that you're I mean I guess what I'm trying to say is that it makes a lot of sense that you have that you're kind of repelled in a way because you're afraid but at the same time you're kind of like hypnotized by it yes so and, and attracted Hawaii, to it you know yeah in Hawaii I went snorkeling that for me oh, oh my god that was like major that was like yeah, yeah, I'll bet. the sharks you know now i'm like oh maybe i need to like because i want to take photographs of the fish and be down there like but what if the sharks come and want to eat me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's what i'm thinking you know it's like but like eventually maybe i will take a diving class i mean that will be like totally remember i told you you have to work harder on yourself than yes that, that is in that you work on your artwork and that would be it like I want to experience everything that has to do with the ocean even if it kills me out of fear but in order to paint it you know having that reference behind me so but then snorkeling was so amazing it was like it was like you're there and then you're all this beautiful fish were around me and I was sort of meditating and it was quiet and, and they didn't bug me they didn't try to bite me or anything yeah yeah fantastic so anyway it will be interesting to see what what comes out of of this ocean experience i yes. uh i i have to say um for me it was it was i had a spiritual experience that i won't get into the details of it but 14 years ago i got very sick i was in italy uh in vacation well I, I went with mark my husband for work and then we vacation and we arrived in florence and that night i had a pulmonary embolism and i was in a coma and all that that's when i was going to grand central okay and i was like a month in the hospital there and then when i came back um i came back to life i only had 15 percent chances of survival it was like literally any moment I was going to die. But then I, I woke up. Okay. And what happened for the next two months was so transformative that, um, and I'm very hard to explain with words, but imagine that, um, I don't know, like imagine they take your brain out and there you are with nothing to think about. You're just experiencing like the world. There's no, no brain, so you have no judgment. Mm -hmm. And everything I looked for two months, I couldn't talk because of the, the intubation had hurt my, my 
my throat so badly that I couldn't say a word. For two months, I was in pure silence. I mean, I talked with my hands. Mm -hmm. I do write things. Um, but I would never forget when I went back to, you know, to Grand Central Academy and I used to turn the corner right on 44th Street and there was this hot dog stand vendor. And every morning it would make me so nauseous the way it smelled in that corner. I don't know. It was just the fried stuff. I don't know. It was just too early. You know, I was getting into school yeah, yeah. at 7, 38. Like, and I remember after that experience, turning the, the corner and looking at the vendor and feeling nothing. Like there was this, literally, it's like if I had taken some sort of drug and I was like, peace and love. I mean, like, <laughs> honestly, it was, it was so incredibly beautiful what I was feeling. It was complete um, absence of anything other than being grateful to be alive and feeling mm. beautifully in love with life and everything that surrounded me. So it was like these glasses that I had. I, I don't, I honestly, it's, it's really hard to explain what I was seeing because like my senses were like ultra, like, you know, I could feel more, I could sense more, I could smell more. It was like seeing things in like in 3d or 5d. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and that has had a huge impact that experience. Two months later, I started talking and then little by little, I became human again. <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and then after that, I went to be hypnotized. So how can I go back to that stage? It's like, what I have to wake up? What did I have to wake up? It was just so surreal. So earlier when we were talking about beauty and, and you're trying to understand what is it that I want to uh have the viewer experience it's maybe a little bit of that that I went through mm. and at a minor scale maybe yes months but maybe 30 seconds they can pause and not think about anything and just yeah yeah no yeah that makes a that makes a lot of sense with what you were saying at first um with because that is that I mean you said that's the goal with your flower paintings that you make them uh gigantic like that to force the viewer to look at them and just be looking at it and contemplating the painting the flower the painting of the flower for a little while and so like during that time they're quiet and they're just paying attention to the thing and just having something is happening in there you know yes yeah I mean, okay would portrait work or any 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 kind of art form that I put up there I think that's that's the intention even if it's for one minute okay all right well um we have reached the 56 minute mark of this conversation and I really like that as the ending you know the ending thoughts of the conversation so um Victoria why don't you tell our future listeners and viewers uh, what are you working on lately? Is there anything you want to add? Do you have any projects you're working on uh, that you're excited about? Um, maybe the ocean stuff. You want to talk more about that? Um, where can people find your work? This type of stuff. No, well, I am representing by uh, two galleries in Panama. Currently, I'm not working with a gallery in the country. I was working with a gallery in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we got ties uh, last year. But this year, I think I'm going to start looking for representation for my own personal work again. Uh, I'm very excited about um, about the ocean and and I do want to continue painting my flowers because they mean so much and I just I just love you know that kind of work. I also want to continue working with with portraits, not portrait commissions, but like do my own kind of portrait work that I keep you know, I keep thinking about what is it that I want to pick from, you know, from whoever I paint. Um, I don't want to necessarily just paint a person standing. I want to say something. Right. I want to tell, yeah. you know, a little bit narrative. So those are ideas that I have um, in my head right now. I, um, 
I guess you can share my website and my Instagram. That's where I post a lot of stuff that I'm working on. And that's it. Did I miss something? God. Mm, no, I think that's that sounded okay. good. All right. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for watching and listening. Special thanks to my guest, Victoria. I really appreciate it for agreeing to talk to me and for your time. If you'd like to support Victoria, my podcast, myself, or all three, all the corresponding links, including all the uh, Victoria's links, her website and her Instagram account will be in the video description. Make sure you like this video and leave a comment so we know you saw this episode. Also, remember to subscribe to my audiovisual channel and see you next time. So thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you.